the Vine. I'm your host, Caitlin Bristow. I always feel like Nick Lachey, where I'm like, and I'm obviously Caitlin Bristow. You know what you're tuning into. Today, I got to talk to Lindsay Arnold Cusick, pro dancer on Dancing with the Stars. Her little sister is now a dancer as she turns into being a mom and fully leans into that. And I'm obsessed with her family. And we talk all Dancing with the Stars, being a mom, everything you'd want to hear from Lindsay, we talk about. So enjoy. Hi, Lindsay. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm so glad you're so excited to chat and your hair looks freaking incredible. That's so nice of you. This is impressive and gross, but I have not washed it since I got it done. And I'm so oh. scared to because I'm like, I can't do it the same as they do it at the salon. And like the color is perfect right now. And I'm like, I'm so scared to ruin everything. I totally feel you. I extend that wash after getting it done for as long as I possibly can. But the good thing with short hair is you really don't have to wash it as often. Like, I feel like the like dirty look is like, kind of what it is like that's it's what you want true it's true I You're literally wake up I wake up and I go and put some dry shampoo and in it. and then I'm like okay, I'm bye. ready I know yeah. I <laughs> seriously have been so tempted to chop my hair because I've done it a couple times and it's I never regret it it's always so freaking fun I feel like you have such great hair where it grows back like if you want to grow it out long again your hair grows really quickly mine like I'm like this will be it forever now because my hair just doesn't grow <laughs> Well, it looks like so I'm good. So this. you might as well just commit. It's perfect. Yeah, but what about when the bob is like not a thing anymore and everyone's like, oh my God, it's like the, it would be like me having a side part with like chunky hair. Like <laughs> I'll be in 10 years, just like still rocking the bob, being like, yeah. Bobs can't go out. That's not fair. They can't do that to us. But gosh, they'll do it. Gen Z is really hitting us hard with all the things. So can't keep up anymore. I went and tattooed my eyebrows and then all of a sudden, like thinner eyebrows are a thing again. I'm like, You're I, like, just, what the I heck? can't keep up. <laughs> I can't I can't I I keep up my get ready with me would be like so boring I'd be like get ready with me I'm like I haven't showered in a week and I just do this to my hair You're like, good here one. we go we're good that's the best time to get ready I like that that's my style no your get ready with me I'm going to talk about them later with you because I love them so much like seeing oh. sage and your get ready with I just can't I'm like so cuted out you make me want a baby so bad oh my gosh you're so sweet we'll, we'll get into all things babies and kids because I feel like you were just like born to be a mom and do what you're oh, doing so you're are so you in Utah sweet. right now I am yep I'm in Utah okay amazing I did you know I don't know if you know this but on my season of Bachelorette we were trying to keep spoilers away from reality Steve and okay he, like he spoils every season and oh every this... season I always look yeah okay you do I'm like I, I hate every spoilers time. so I never look but I was so proud that he didn't know my yeah. season and all of the production were like okay for once he doesn't know and so instead of going to meet the two guys families in their hometowns we actually did hometowns in Park City Utah oh you did Wait, yes. I, like I actually kind of remember that. Do all your sisters live in Utah as well? Yeah, so I grew up here. My parents still live in the house that I like lived oh, my entire obsessed. life in. Yes, yeah. and we all like live within a 10 minute radius. We're in like a little triangle. So it's so nice that I have family here. I mean, I love it because of okay. Utah. But I also love it because my family's here. Like it just makes it home. I know you guys are all so close. And it's like you have you have one of those families that I feel like people want to see on television. Like we're like, uh, I need more of this content. But <laughs> would you guys ever do that. that? Would you ever do a reality show of your, with your family? Honestly, we've had talks before. Like a lot of people have approached us. The problem is, is I feel like we're generally just like too normal. Like we're not dramatic. We yeah. don't hate each other secretly. <laughs> yeah. We don't really fight. So like we have always been we're very open to it in the sense of like it would be so fun because we're open people. We love to share our lives, but we're like, it has to be the right thing because it's like we're you're not gonna get drama out of us. Like you're just probably not. But I feel so like that's okay. But I really feel like people are actually craving wholesome content on social media and television right now. Like I don't I, I actually yeah. think that people are kind of over drama. I feel like we saw that with Golden Bachelor where we were like loving yes. seeing women, like cheering on the other women and yes. being happy for them. And I was like, nobody missed drama. Like there's a tiny bit, but it was like cute drama. Yes, and I just like it wasn't like anything. Yeah, I feel like your family would deliver like good, well, wholesome. thank you. Yeah, I like <laughs> thank it. You. I, I would love, it. I would, I would love it. But yeah, it's like, it would have to be very, it would just have to be the right thing because we're also like, like I said, we're pretty normal. We've all got like spouses who are not in this world. So it's just like, it would have to be something where it's like, they're down for us to just be our normal selves because they're not going to get much else. So we'd have to see, I, but it would I be would so watch. fun. Thank I you. I would definitely Thank watch. You. <laughs> but I feel like, we're, was he, like your family dynamic and growing up with that many, like that 
much estrogen in one house? Was it always, were you guys always like normal and getting along? Because I have a sister, one, well, I have six stepsisters, but I didn't grow up with them. My parents remarried later in life. Oh my God. So okay, yeah. I grew up with one sister and it was like so dramatic because of the hormones and like mood oh. swings. And I just can't even imagine that many women in one household. Oh, 100%. Like when I tell people, I'm like, I've always loved my sisters, like always, but we weren't really friends until we all kind of like graduated and left the house <laughs> because it was just that it was who's on their period this week. Oh, we're all synced up. Who's stealing whose clothes, who gets to yes. like have this thing, who's driving. And I was the oldest. So I feel like I was just I always tell people, I was like, I was that bratty older sister that was like, no, like you can't hang out with me and my <laughs> friends. So there was all of that there. Well, it's such a crazy age difference. It is. It really is. Like me and my youngest sister, Riley, we're 12 years apart. So it's like, there's That's a crazy. lot, which I will say me and like, there were certain sisters that I really never fought with. And then the one that was closest to me, like we would have our most bickering, which just makes sense. But now they're literally my best friends. And I know that's not always the case. Like, I think I've been surprised to hear people being like, I wish I was close to my sister. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, how are you not? But I get that it's not the case. So we're really lucky that we're now actually best friends. Like we love each other and we're best friends. I want to know what's in the water in Utah. I feel like every single person that comes out of there can dance. They're all talented. Everyone's beautiful. Everyone has like, multiple siblings and they're all just good at something like what is in the water in Utah I don't get it uh, well I mean I feel like it's funny because it it kind of has become that especially in the dance world I yes. feel like what sets people apart in Utah when it comes to dancing is the fact that we grew up training in all styles like the dance studio I was at and that a lot of us who are on the show were at we did not just like ballet jazz hip-hop contemporary all of that but we also trained in ballroom yeah. and that's what set us apart because I feel like in other parts of the world it's like you've got your hardcore ballroom dancers like the Artems and the Vals and the Glebs like yeah they just did ballroom and then there's the other side where it's like just jazz you're going to the conventions you're doing that world but we kind of met somewhere in the middle and I feel like that opened up a lot of opportunity for us in the dancing world, if that makes sense. That actually does make a lot of sense. I never thought of that because I grew up doing dance. I grew up doing like jazz, tap, ballet, lyrical, hip hop, but never ballroom. And yeah. ballroom, as people know, is just a whole other ball game of, of dancing because totally. I know everybody that's ever been a dancer that's gone as a star on Dancing with the Stars. Like if they have dance background, they're like, oh, this is so it different. It doesn't help. No, it doesn't help you at all. It, it really is so different. The only way it helps is maybe like the performance of it, but not the steps or the technique at all. And so that actually makes a lot of sense that you're just so well-rounded, but how in the hell do you have time to add ballroom to all the other things? Like, cause I, I know how busy I was as a dancer growing up. I, it was six days a week. My yeah. one day off was Sunday and yeah. I had to do my homework at the dance studio and then you're mixing in ballroom and I don't know how you did it. I know. I think it's just because like at our, it's not like I had to go somewhere else to do my ballroom. Like my studio did that as well. So it was just like, just like every, you go to ballet every day, hip hop, jazz, like you went to also a ballroom technique class. You had ballroom teams. So it's like, I feel like we just got really lucky because it wasn't something that I had to go out and add on. It was just kind of part of the game. Like, it's interesting because like you said, it's like, if you're a jazz dancer, it's such a different world. And yeah. I've learned that more because for me, that all of them were just part of the dance world, but it really is so freaking different. It's so different. Oh my gosh. I, c I still can't believe how different it was. I was like, oh, and the, the teaching style is very hardcore because it's so specific. Like, I feel like yeah. you can't just like throw in your own style and do that. It's like no. very specific and like strict almost. And a hundred percent Artem outside of the ballroom. I'm like, you are a sweet baby angel. Like I love you. And <laughs> in the ballroom, I'm like, damn, what did I do to hurt you? I know. I know. Ballroom coaches are tough. Like it's because it, like you said, it's not freestyle. It's not really bringing, I mean, you can bring your own player to a, to a scent, like to a little bit, but then it's like at the end of the day, you've got to follow the technique. You've got to be on like perfectly well and then you add the element of it being on tv a competitive show like the yeah. everybody makes more money the longer you go on and it's this whole thing so it's like you add oh, that yeah. pressure on top of the strict technique and I want to know what kind of teacher because we missed each other in that world I and know so I know COVID, so I was like I didn't I really get to like 
totally hang with everybody the way I wanted to. Yeah. We still hung out here and there, but I mean, I we both just like missed each other. And I know I want to know what kind of teacher you are because I can't picture you being a hard ass. <laughs> I'm honestly not. I'm really yes. not. Like, I feel like, I mean, I can get that way, but I'm just, I'm not. Like, I've seen the way the guy pros are and how like intense and like, I just have never really been like that. And also like, I... I think it depended on the partner though. Like there were seasons where I could be a little bit tougher, but like, I feel like my tough is like here. Whereas like the tough, tough is still up here, but I kind of had to gauge it based on my partners. And for me personally, like that's just not really my personality. So then I feel like I would be like, not having fun trying to be like that. You know what I mean? I feel like I would be a psychopath as a teacher because I'm so competitive and I'm so intense. Like I would be like an Artem. I would be like on the outside of the dance studio. People would be like, oh, you're so nice. And then inside they'd be like, you are a crazy bitch. And I'd be like, I know, I know, but we're going to win. But we're going to do it. I know. See, I feel like I have, it's funny because I feel like what's going on inside my head is not what I actually put out. Like I will be losing my mind, like so upset, so frustrated. And then I like think that I like express that, but then like, I'll see like the package back and be like, oh my gosh, I was still so nice. Like in my head, I'm like, I hate you. And I'm like, let's try again. You're doing a really good job. Like, I'm like, what is wrong with me? Like, I just feel like it's not really in me to be, I don't know. It was hard, but it's funny. Cause I feel like I tried sometimes to be like that. And my trying still just wasn't really very tough, but but we got it done. So it works. <laughs> I mean, you won a mirror ball. So obviously I guess something, something worked. Right. Yeah. Something <laughs> worked. I loved watching you and Matt. I loved, loved your guys' like relationship on social media oh my gosh. And, and him with Sage was always so sweet. And I remember when he went home, I was like, wait, what? Because oh, you guys I were was so, so good. Shocked. And it was like a shock. It was a shock. It was. I was so shocked. You're like, I know. And I was just so bummed mostly because I was having so much fun with Matt. Like I was yeah. having so much fun. This was also my first season back after after having Sage, like my first season right. back as a mom. And I was so, so bummed. I mean, I, I will say I was shocked just cause like I hadn't had a bachelor before, but typically they go pretty far. Like I feel like bachelor nation really pulls you through. So I kind of was like, Oh, we'll be okay for a little bit longer. And I also didn't think Matt was a bad dancer. Like he wasn't the best, but he also no, was but he was good. He tried, he tried, he tried really yeah. hard, which I love when people try, like that there's just some, like you could tell he really enjoyed it and you two enjoyed working together so it was fun for us to watch at home because you guys just had a good dynamic because I know there are times where and maybe it comes across on screen and sometimes it doesn't but have you ever had a partner where you were like I, if I get out of this competition tomorrow like I'm cool I'm, I'm cool with that because the, I've heard <laughs> nightmare stories about some of the stars and celebs c- that come on the show because if you think about an actor or somebody that's been in the entertainment world for a long time yeah they like know what to expect and they know the payment they're going to get and they know what their hours are going to be. And then I feel like nobody prepares you for Dancing with the Stars where all of a sudden you're like, oh, this is a full-time job and somebody is telling me what to do and how to do it all times of the day. So there must be nightmare stories. Honestly, like I am, I don't know how I lucked out because I have never, okay, that's a lie. My first season was rough. Um, It was rough. My partner was not a good dancer. He'd forget his, choreography like on stage Who was it? Victor Ortiz he was a boxer mm-hmm. and he just was not made to dance so that was tough yeah but after that like I really never had a season like let's be real I had probably more non-dancers than I, I think I only had two partners that had previous dance experience the rest of them were starting from square one so that's not to say that there weren't seasons where I was like oh my gosh like right. thinking of teaching my partner how to do another dance every week like I'd be like how am I going to do this but I never didn't want to do it because like, I just would always have so much fun with my partners. I think back on like one of my favorite seasons where I had a dancer who was just a partner who was not a dancer was David Ross. Like, and I mean, I say this to his face, like he was a bad dancer and like, he got a little bit better, but still at the end, like he was not a great dancer. (laughs) And every week I'd literally be like, I don't know how we are going to do this, especially when it gets to the point where you're doing like two, three dances a week. I would always be like, how is this going to happen? But I never didn't want to show up because like, I just had so much fun. And I was actually talking to somebody about this the other day. Like I still stay in contact with all of my partners, which also is pretty rare. Like there's times where the season ends and it's like sayonara. I don't ever want to talk to you ever again in my life. Totally. (laughs) totally. I've never had that. And I'm really, really grateful for that. Okay. I know I had my ins and outs lists. Why are people still wearing uncomfortable clothes? 
out. It's an out for me. If you're an avid listener of this podcast, you already know how much I love Skims. And let me tell you, they have delivered yet again. Skims is creating the next generation of underwear and bras for everybody. I just tried Skims bras and you guys, they are, they're just worth the hype for the amazing shape and support they give. But what I wasn't expecting was how comfortable they are. Even the underwire bras I'm wearing all day and barely even notice. I barely notice. I got the Fits Everybody t-shirt bra and actually I wear it as a sports bra too. It's literally the most comfortable bra I've ever owned. I had to get it in multiple colors because that's what I do when I love something. <laughs> I found myself wanting to wear it every single day. So I got a bunch of colors and the material is just so soft. The straps are adjustable. I feel supported. What more could you want? And Skims offers a complete system of bra solutions for every need and every style. And they're available now in 62 sizes. So 30A to 46H. So believe the hype, Skims has over 100,000 five-star reviews for a reason, and Skims bras are now available at skims.com, plus get free shipping on orders over $75. If you haven't yet, be sure to let them know I sent you there. So after you place your order, select podcast in the survey, and then select off the vine in the drop-down menu that follows. Give me some cred! And if you're looking to get a gift for your Valentine, or even for yourself, or you want to hint, hint to your partner about a Valentine's Day gift, Skims just launched their best Valentine's shop ever also available at skims.com. I feel like Dancing with the Stars is kind of like an analogy for life. Like in motherhood and life and Dancing with the Stars. Oh my gosh. You're like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to get out of bed this morning? How am I going to show up as a mom? How am I going to get my kids here and do this? How am I going to... And then somehow, I do sometimes it. I think it's it's women in general, but like we just oh. do it and you just get yep. it done. And I feel like that's Dancing with the Stars. A <laughs> hundred. I was actually, I actually did a TikTok about this the other day talking about how Dancing with the Stars, like, prepared me for motherhood because it's literally that it's like you there's no option but to just do it like you don't get to just decide like this is too hard I'm out like no you're right. gonna do it yeah. Monday is gonna roll around no matter what you're gonna have to perform live so you've just got to make it happen I feel like it is really it taught me a lot of resilience and a lot of just like let's go we got to push through and it's helped me so much as a mom because that's life like you I said it's like there's that. mornings where I wake up and I'm like Oh, I don't want to do this, but then you just got to do it. Yeah. And you somehow do like, you just figure it out and you just do it. Pretty it's cool. True. That's <laughs> that. That's funny that you did a TikTok about that the other day. That just came to me. Like, as you were talking, I was like, yep. that kind of sounds like life. Like <laughs> I know it really, really does. Like it's, it's such a good metaphor. And I feel like it really prepares you for a lot of things. <laughs> I mean, you probably felt like you got a little bit prepared as a mother for having like a baby sister when you were an older like teen I know it must be such a crazy thing now to see your baby sister be the pro on Dancing with the Stars and you're watching at home what has that been like for you oh you have no idea like it literally I tell people this like her getting the call to be on the show I was more excited than I was for myself I was yeah. more nervous for Riley than I ever was for myself I was more like everything just hit me so much more because one it's like i when she got the call that she was going to be on the show, I knew, I'm like, I knew how life changing that call is for her. Whereas it's like, she saw me do it, but she hasn't experienced it yet. I mean, she's experienced it now, but it was just like me, just like knowing that my sister is going to have this life changing thing happen to her. And so much can come from that and the potential that's there. Like, it was just so cool. And then, like I said, like so nervous for her because it's like, I can't do yeah. anything but I know how stressful the position she's going to be in is, but it's yeah. just, it was honestly a dream come true. Like it was, it was so rewarding for me as a big sister to watch her do something, not only that, like she's wanted to do for so long, but that I got to experience as well. It's just, it's been the coolest experience ever. I have to say. Well, and you also did it for over a decade, which is like yeah. such a long time. Cause I think That's about um, dancers as athletes and like an athlete's career it's like, it really does end in their thirties, their body can't yeah. go through it anymore. And dancers are such athletes. And so to do what you did on, on a show like that, on that big of a platform, I mean, sometimes they don't bring people back. Sometimes they do, I know. you did it for yeah. over 10 years. So now to have it still in the family must be like, like a nice little transition because I also, I, I dated an athlete. So I like know how sometimes it works and I compare it a lot to dancers and yeah. when they have to like retire or say goodbye to something that that's like what they've done every day since they were little, that's what their life, they eat, breathe, sleep, the, that career. And then to just have it, that door closed so fast and abruptly. And then you're just like, now what? It's nice that you're like, oh, now I get to watch it still in the family. And oh, how cool is that? A hundred percent. Cause it's true. Like that was part of my life for so long. It was a really hard decision to like step away. And 
I have never like regretted that decision, but I've always like, it's, I still would watch the show. And now it just means even more to me that I get to have Riley on there. And I tell people all the time, I'm like, it's perfect. I get to have like a taste of the show, all the good parts of it, but I don't have to actually like commit to living in LA to relocating my family. Like I don't have to do the hard parts of it. I just get to enjoy the fun aspect of it. And it could not have worked out better. Honestly, I'm like, this is and great. And you probably <laughs> get to give so much advice. And I bet she like appreciates that your, your insight so much because I mean, what a great first season she had. And I feel like oh my gosh. that must have been so hard for you as a big sister too, to have people talking about her on the internet and like, go oh my all that. gosh, You're probably like, <laughs> I'm like, everybody just shut up. But yeah. also like, but you're so right. It's like it, What's really good about Riley is, like I mentioned, we have this big age gap. I'm 12 years older than her. I feel like she would, and I have two, we have two other sisters between us, but Riley was the first and only sister that I feel like actually like respected and like wanted my opinion on things. Cause you know how it is when you like, you know how, like when it's close in age, you're like, I don't want to listen to my sister, but with Riley, like I've always been, it felt like I was kind of, she was like the little second child to me, not even second child because I didn't have kids yet, but it felt like she really like, she'd respect my decisions or my opinion and like ask me for help. And so it was so cool going throughout the season with her. She's, I mean, she's the best. And the coolest thing was like watching how much she already knew from just seeing me do the show. Like she handled everything so much better than I did on my first couple of seasons because she had seen me go through it. She knew what to do and all the online stuff. Like she just handled it like a champ. Like she really did. I mean, people were ruthless with her and Harry and like, you guys should be here. And if that had been me my first season, it would have absolutely destroyed me. And she was so good at just being like, whatever, like, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to keep doing what I got to do. And I'm so proud of her. I truly, I don't know her at all. And I was so proud of her. Like, I felt like I was rooting for her more because of that. Cause I was like, yeah. she is handling everything with so much strength and grace. I know. And like, I think about how I handle situations as a 38 year old woman. And I'm like, <laughs> Ugh. I'm like that. I could have handled that better. And then seeing her, what is she, 18 years old, just like yeah. handling yeah. things like an absolute boss and with I like know. a smile on her face and still like, and she's so lovable. Like there's something I so know. sweet about her. It's like, I don't know. I just, I'm like, whenever I think about having daughters, I always am like, oh, I hope they're like, I hope they would be like that because I know I was a nightmare oh I was too but I think we all are at some point it's okay though we learn as long as we get there eventually (laughs) no but she she really is she's way mature like beyond her years and everybody would say that like on the show they're like we're just shocked that she's literally 18 years old but I'm just so proud of her like it was so rewarding watching her do this last season she killed it Oh, she was incredible. Everything about it was incredible. I loved it. I was totally like, I always root for a lot of people on that show, but they were two where I was like, come on, like obviously charity because she's one of my good girlfriends. Yeah, I don't know. Of course, just something about them that that you just wanted to keep watching more. And now she's on tour. And I was thinking about this. And I remember the first night I was on tour, they told me about the bus accident that you guys were in. Oh, yes. And I was yeah. like, oh, I had no You're idea. You're like, why it didn't was you like tell me this? <laughs> night one. And it's like in winter time, they're telling me this. And it was like 40 car pile up in the winter. And I just was like, that's so terrifying because you guys, obviously your bodies are your vessel and you need those. Yeah. And like to crack a rib even, or like do something damaging. And you get in this massive bus accident where people are flying. How did you guys... Like, tell me that story because I I know you talked about it on your TikTok, but I want people to hear the story because it was so terrifying. Yeah, it was honestly so scary. I had done four tours before that. So honestly, I feel like it was one of those things where it's like, you just kind of think it's never going to happen to you. Like, you're just yeah. like, that's not going to happen. But it was, it was crazy. We are on the tour bus. We're driving from one city to the next. We're driving in the middle of a really bad snowstorm. But to be honest, that's not the first time we had done that. I mean, like you said, the tour is in the winter. You're traveling all across the country. Like you're going to hit snowstorms. So we're in the bus, which you've been in a tour bus. The scariest thing about this crash was just how, when you're in the bus, like you kind of don't really see anything on the road or outside of the bus. Like yeah. the wind, you have windows, but we have the blinds down always. Like you're not like looking at the road like you would in a normal car. Right. So the obliviousness and just like the what is happening was what really was just terrifying. But I was on the bus. It was me, Brandon, Sasha, Emma. My husband, Sam, was actually on the tour as well. He was oh, working he was that tour. Yes. Oh. So he actually, it was funny. That tour I almost didn't do 
Cause I was like, I don't want to be away from my husband. Like, this is just hard. And they're like, what if we offer your husband a job on the road? And I'm like, uh, heck yeah. So he was doing online school at the time. And then he ran the VIP meet and greets for the tour. So it was really fun because we got to be together the entire tour. He was actually on the bus. Like he had his own bunk. He wasn't just visiting. He was there. May I just chime in for one second and say like, if I was with somebody since high school, and I had the opportunity to get on a bus and leave for a minute I would be like I'm excited about that and it's so sweet that you're like I'm excited he gets to like spend the whole time on the bus with me oh yeah I was it was so fun I we loved it so much it was so fun and it worked out so well that he got to like actually work because I like I said I had done tours before that and he never came with me because he was either working home or he was just doing something and he's kind of the person that needs to like have something to do so it worked out perfect. Like we were both fulfilled to do everything and we got to travel that's the sweet. country together and we got to yeah, get that's bus nice. accidents together. So that was exciting. Oh, but essentially gosh. still don't really know everything because like I said, we couldn't see, but it was me, Emma and Sasha up in the front. We start feeling like all the, the things, like you feel the rumble strips and we're like, oh, we're going off the road. So like, okay, that's not right. good. But then it's like just freaking everything shaking, moving all the windows or not windows, but like the cabinets are kind of like flying open and the food's falling out. And we're just kind of like bracing ourselves. And it was so sad because I had hit my head during like one of the first bumps. Cause it was long. I feel like we were like crashing for like 30, 40 seconds, oh which God. I know that doesn't seem oh long, but gosh. it's long no, when that you're seems just really like, long. Everything's yeah. in slow motion. So I hit my head and Sasha being the sweetest ever, like stands up to try to help me. And then that's mm-hmm. when we actually like hit the, we ran into the back of a semi And that's when we hit and he was standing up because he was trying to help me and he went flying like actually like flying up into the air slams into the front of the bus emma like got fully knocked the wind out of her brandon was in the back and he fell asleep in his bunk backwards so he like hit his head really hard yes after that we were like because it's it sucks and i know why he did it but the vents in the bus are like right by your head so when you're sleeping you don't want them blowing on your face so he would sleep backwards but he never did that again after that day but yeah, it was okay. terrifying. It was luckily like, I mean, we were all okay. Our bus driver was in the front and like the whole, the whole front of the bus was like completely shattered. Um, a lot of people actually like passed in the accident. Like there were cars oh around us that God. had people who had passed away. It was very terrifying. We had to climb out the back window because the whole front was kind of like smashed in. We couldn't get out the door and it was crazy. We waited on the freeway cause it was like, oh I mean, huge pileup behind us. And we waited for a while to get off because ambulance was coming but obviously taking the people who were like in really like really needed it all of us were we weren't we were hurt but none of us were like oh we're like severely injured and then eventually when we got out we went to the hospital we got like ct scans and all the things and luckily we were all okay just like bruised ribs and stuff like that but it was honestly terrifying and we were all really shaken up about it and then it sucked yeah because we had to like I mean back on the bus we could have like it's not like the tour forced us to keep going but right we wanted to finish out the tour but that meant getting back on a bus and sleeping on the bus and not and it was hard like for the next for the rest of that tour like I remember all of us would wake up like in a panic like if we hit anything we'd all like (gasps) and we'd like all be up at the same time we'd be like we're okay and then we'd like go back to sleep and it was it was very scary but we're so lucky that we're okay I mean 100% 40 people like a 40 car pileup is a lot of injured people and like to know that people didn't survive that also sticks with you yeah I've been in a very tiny car accident and that like rocked my world I couldn't get in a car for so long afterwards like it it just shook me I was younger but like to think of that severe of an accident and then knowing you just have to get back on a bus and I know. like perform too. So like your body's sore and you've, yeah. when you go through something like scary like that, I feel like your body wants to shut down and like sleep oh. and you like don't know how to process it. And 100%. so to just like, the show must go on kind of mentality that you have to just get back on the bus and perform like that must've been challenging. Yeah, it was. I think I think it also helped in a way that like we had something to just like get back into our routine because I think it would have been really like it's almost like if I would have left the tour and just gone home I would have been like well this feels weird too so it was kind of just like I'm really glad that I was with the people that I was with I feel like we all handled it pretty pretty well and we're just like okay we just like we're really lucky that we're okay so let's continue to do what we can because we can like let's just keep doing it and it was very it was very helpful to like be on the road and just kind of like have that distraction but for a little bit we were pretty it was it was very stressful but we're all very lucky and I mean yeah but it was crazy I mean even just knowing that story and being on a tour bus with everyone I was like I mean 
I had the back room and everyone thought that would be like the glorious place to be. I thought it was the worst. I would have preferred a bunk because I've heard I that. felt everything back yeah. there. Like well, you're right above the that, tires. It's like right above the tires. I yeah. was literally bouncing off the bed. And then the, anytime we hit rumble strips, I'm like, we're gone. Yeah. myself. Yeah. And I'm just didn't sleep for like the full, and that's a lot of shows you guys do on tour. Like I know that's like, a lot. I think there was 67 shows between 67 different cities on a bus the whole time. Like that is like the the lack of rest and sleep depth. I'm like, what did you get more sleep as a mom or on the tour bus? Honestly, I actually it's kind of weird. I wish you would have had a bunk because I actually slept like a I mean, before the crash, I slept like a baby on the bus because it's so dark. You've got that little bit of movement. I would sleep so good on the tour bus. Like there's nights I crave that. I've known this for a while, but did you know that socks, tees, and underwear are the three most requested clothing items in homeless shelters? So I love this. Bombas is doing something about it, and they're making ridiculously comfortable versions of all three and donating one for every item sold. I'm actually wearing my Bombas socks right now. I love them. With all the clothing brands out there, it's just nice to find some basics that don't just feel good, but you know, they do good too. To date, Bombas has helped customers donate over 100 million essential clothing items to people facing homelessness. That is a lot of good done by people just buying the Bombas that they wear every day. And once you try Bombas, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so whether that's a sock that feels like it was just meant for your little footsie or a super soft tee without the itchy tag, I just love my Bomba socks. I'm, tell, I, I'm a weirdo about it. I love them. My toes just usually get so cold, especially this time of year, and I'm always wearing my Bombas around the house. Bombas has just mastered the cozy game. <laughs> They're slippers. Let's just say if you put these on, you might have to cancel your plans. Oh, sorry. I can't go out and put Bomba slippers on. Plus, Bombas also has 100% happiness guarantee. So if you get the wrong size, maybe your dog chews up your socks or a pair vanishes in the washing machine, it's easy to get a free return exchange or replacement. So are you ready to get comfy and give back? Head over to bombas.com slash vine and use code vine for 20% off your first purchase. That's B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash vine and use code vine at checkout. You're so active on TikTok. Have you heard of the burnt toast theory? No. Really? No. Yeah, no. Okay. See, I feel like I'm active on TikTok, but I don't know any of the trends. I don't scroll enough to like follow the things. Please fill me in. This I need is, to know. Okay, so burnt toast is a theory and it's the idea that inconveniences in our lives are saving us from something more detrimental or pushing us in the direction oh. of where we need to go, which I'm obsessed with this theory, but then I I'm like that. and and I love that too, but I think of like the people who like didn't get in their car that day to go on this trip and that weren't in that accident I'm like burnt toast theory but then I'm like but what about the people that people did that did yeah and what about yeah. the bad things that happened to good people I'm like what theory is that because it doesn't make sense I know I know that is such a good point though I feel like that's yeah I don't know I feel like that's just kind of life though it's like you get those you get those small graces and sometimes you just don't like sometimes you're given the grace and sometimes you're not and that is life you can't live a perfect life that would be I mean you wouldn't grow and learn and when you think hard about it it's kind of like a oh my gosh like it really kind of throws you for a loop so (laughs) it does but I try and think of the burnt toast theory like if I get mad about little things like if I I'm trying to think of what happened to me the other day and I was like burnt toast theory I can't even remember it was something like let's say I got cut off in traffic and like got so mad at this person it's just a good mentality for people to have is to remember burnt toast if you know if you You don't like even if you don't find out what the good thing is of it if you just think it I feel like it exits the thought and then you're not as mad about it you're like this will be for the better and then you don't have to think about it anymore it's like just get it out of my brain and it started obviously because people like if you burnt your toast maybe that saved you from doing something you know like it it's the like power of also negative thinking like oh I burnt my toast and now I'm and then it just spirals into a bad day where if you're like burnt toast theory and then you like spin zone it and you're like that saved me from something else in my day I feel like I might need to steal that especially being a mom because that's a lot of my day just oh okay you pooped everywhere and now I have to change your clothes and wash your diaper or wash your car seat for the 15th time this week burnt toast it's great burnt toast (laughs) yep I'm late for my appointment burnt toast just get cool. like a piece of burnt toast tattooed on your arm and then you'll always really remember good idea. just okay we're gonna make it today <laughs> that's, that's a good transition into being a mom because from, yes. from going on dancing with the stars and I love that you made the choice to focus on being a mom because I can't imagine doing both I know people do it and it's just like I bow down to all moms in general but I think it's awesome that you are you know 
stepping away to be a mom and life goes by so fast, especially in those beginning phases. You probably did that season with Matt and felt like you missed out on so much while you were away. So now you have two girls and yes. you obviously know how it feels to be a big sister. So how does it feel to watch Sage as a big sister? Oh my gosh. It's the cutest thing. I have to say that's probably been the funnest part about the wild life of being a mom of two kids. Like it's wild. Having two is so crazy and so fun, but like my favorite part and they aren't even really old enough to play together yet. And I'm already obsessed with it, but just seeing those like glimpses of like them connecting, like it's so cute. Sage is obsessed with June, but what's so funny is June is like, I feel even more obsessed with Sage. She watches really? everything she does. She'll just sit on the ground and just watch her play, smile, laugh at her. Like Aww. she's in love with her. So it's like seeing those glimpses of this friendship that's just going to blossom as the years come and then probably be a little, you know, they'll probably have their draw with a fight over clothes, but like, I'm excited for that. Like I like, I yeah. think because I know it's like, they can have that and still love each other and then be best friends when they grow up. And I'm just like, I'm ready for all of it when it comes to having some sisters that's so cute they I cannot get over like sage in your get ready with me tiktoks I just She's she so is funny. the cutest funniest like such a personality I I like I mean you're great too I just love watching sage so much <laughs> I don't Where blame did you, you. Get the name? where'd you get the name sage in June sage funny it's actually my husband came up with this name and I didn't know the full picture until after I had already loved the name and then I didn't care anymore but my husband's a big outdoorsman outdoorsy guy he loves to fish, hunt, all the things. He was fishing one day and he, well, he was fly fishing to be specific. And the name of his fly fishing rod was Sage. Like that's like a very famous fly fish brand. And he comes home that day though. Like what I, I didn't know any of this, but he comes home. And he's like, I really, I'm pregnant. He's like, I really like the name Sage for a girl. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I love that. And I like quickly fell in love. And like a week later, I put two and two together. I'm like, oh my gosh. She's like, yeah, I came up with that when I was fishing. So I'm like, okay, whatever. But I loved it so much that I didn't even care. And I actually yeah. kind of loved because up until this point, I would like a name. He wouldn't like it. He would like a name. I wouldn't like it. And this is the first one that we agreed upon. So I'm like, cool. We're naming her after your fly fishing rod. At least it's like a yeah. little personal tie to you. But yeah. I, we loved that name. And then when it came to June, we had a hard time because even the names that like were second or third choice for Sage, we didn't like them anymore. So then we had to kind of start from scratch. We did really like the one syllable name and we decided to kind of stick with that theme. But to be honest, June was just random. Like it didn't come, it's not a family name. It's not it. like something that we like. We just kind of honestly were like, let's think of some fun one syllable names. And we just really liked June. It just, and everybody I was dying it. because they were like, she's born in May. Why did you name her June? I'm like, oh, is that, do we have to name them like their month? Yeah. Like, should we call her May? I think it's May? weirder. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's weirder that she, yeah. <laughs> they're like but she wasn't born in June I'm like but if she was wouldn't that be so weird like wouldn't that that be would be weird I know yes, that's what but, I thought too thank you yes I'm assuming these people by people that are saying this you mean online people that don't know oh yeah that. yeah not my yeah. friends not the people who actually yeah. matter just the people who, <laughs> the it trolls, doesn't matter what you, know? you name them they would say something about it it's it's exactly. so interesting what I do love is when you know when women have babies every woman goes through their own journey of postpartum like whatever yeah. that looks like for them everyone has a different version of it and I love when women are open with their journey of what they're going through and I love that you started the movement club because you did it while you were experiencing postpartum so you were very yes. much like I know how this feels and here's what I'm doing yeah. to make myself feel better so can you tell everybody a little bit more about that and what inspired you to start it yeah, honestly, pregnancy inspired me to start the movement club. It was my first pregnancy with Sage. It was the first time I wasn't doing Dancing with the Stars, which was terrifying to me because for my entire life, dancing was my main source of like fitness, working out, staying in shape. Like that's what it was. I mean, that's not to say I didn't go to the gym a little bit here and there, but like dance was that. Dance was that for me. It was my outlet escape. And so to all of a sudden be like, I'm not doing that anymore and beyond that, like my body is changing so much and so rapid and so fast. It feels different, yeah. looks different, all the things, which during my first pregnancy, I was like so on board with that, which I'm really grateful for because I know that's not always the experience. So for me, it was less about like feeling like, oh, I don't like the way I look, but I was just really scared because I was like, I don't know what I can do anymore. Like, how do I still move my body? Feel like I'm giving something to myself, but like stay safe while I'm pregnant and I didn't feel like there was programs that really like supported me through that. And also that I could relate to because it's hard to like, while you're pregnant, 
follow a program of someone who's like in the best shape of their life. And you're just like, you don't like your abs aren't separating. You're not like, you don't, it just didn't feel like I was connecting to that. So I'm like, I want to create a program that is that for women that first of all, takes them through all the different stages of life, which is what inspired me to film my pregnancy program in real time. So I filmed that entire thing during my second pregnancy. And like, I put together a schedule and it's like, if someone's 26 week pregnant, they're doing a video with me when I was 26 weeks pregnant, because I want them to know, like, I'm right there with you. Like I feel all the things you're feeling. And then same with the postpartum. I filmed my postpartum program in real time, which to be honest was scary. Cause I'm like, I don't look like the epitome of fitness right now. Like I just don't. Well, And you're a dancer. So your, your body has always been a certain way. And I know that like women in general, we all struggle in some way with our body image, but totally. uh, And I, I'm not trying to like dismiss people who aren't dancers, but I do feel like there's this like like models, there's this high standard. You have to be this body type to be a dancer. So the pressure of that. Oh, totally. It was just, it's just like, I think that was something it held me back and kind of stressed me out and worried me about it of just being like, why would somebody want to work out with me when I'm not like this perfect physical, physical, like specimen that has the six pack abs and all the things. But that was, that's the thing is I went, well, why am I not joining all these programs? Because I don't feel like I, it's relatable in what I need to see. And so that's what kind of drove me into doing this. And it's been so special because apart from our pregnancy and postpartum, like I also just put out videos for anybody. And it's been cool because I feel like we have all walks of life, all stages of life that have joined the program. And that's essentially what I wanted. I'm like, this is not about perfect fitness. It's about just showing up for yourself when you can. Yeah. And I love how approachable it is too. And there's workouts that you can do obviously from anywhere at any time in like 30 minutes or less. I just love, I love when workouts are approachable for people because I think we all need to get away from the thought of like what working out does for your physical appearance because totally mentally I, I was just so sick for eight days and I realized just how much moving my body in general um, does something for my mental health because I became so depressed and like in such a dark place. And not only was I sick, I was crying every day and I couldn't figure out why. And I realized like, I'm not moving. I'm laying on the couch every day. And just to move your body in any sort of way, it like so good. Yeah. It just does wonders for your mental health health. I don't think I realized that as much as I should have until I got pregnant. Because like I said, dancing and moving my body was just something I always did. And then it became my job. So it wasn't something that I chose for myself anymore. Not that I didn't choose my job, but it was something that I like, I needed to show up and do. And it was required of me. But then I get pregnant. And I'm like, why do I move my body? Cause I'm not moving it right now to stay in shape and to lose weight. Cause I'm gaining weight and I'm like, and I should be, as I should be, I'm pregnant. So it right. became less about that and more about like, why do I still choose to do this? And it was because it helped me so much. It's helped me through pregnancy, through all the postpartum ups and downs, all the hormones. Like I will say movement has been my saving grace. It's the only thing that gets me through all the different things that go on in life. I feel like, so I love that you said that. Cause it's so true. Yeah. And you built such a strong community with it too. I feel like, you know, there's so many, uh, so many moms out there, but so many people that just want to feel part of a community that isn't like this unachievable, like standard of what fitness is. And I just think that's so, I think it's awesome. I've seen so many people Thank you. like, like when you post about it, like it's just, you built a really cool community and Thank I'm you. always such a fan of, of that kind of thing. Cause it's doing so much more than just like putting money in your pocket, you know, and it, yes. that feels good. That feels It good. does. It feels really good. And honestly, I tell people all the time, I'm like, this program has helped me probably just as much as it's helped anybody out there. It's held me accountable to moving my body and like showing up for myself. And I love that. So thank you. (laughs) And then I have a few questions before I let you go from our listeners. People were so excited that you were coming on. Everybody's like, oh my gosh, I love her. And Brittany, who is a listener, she said, I'll be a mom for the first time in a couple months and would like to hear about things that she wishes she knew about postpartum, childbirth, newborns, like anything that you didn't know before your first daughter. And she said your videos with Sage are the cutest. Okay, this one's hard because there's a lot of things I didn't know. But I will say like, let's start with that. Like, it is okay to not know what you're doing. I think like as women and just in general, like we get so stressed out about needing to know all the ins and outs, feeling like we're fully prepared for every situation. And I will say when it comes to babies, when it comes to kids, 
there's not ever going to be a time where you have everything figured out and that's perfectly okay. And it's perfectly normal. Like, I think also it's hard to know, like, is this normal? What I'm going through, what I'm feeling like, I promise you, you're not alone in that. So just trust that you're in the place that you, you need to be in. Also, I wish that I had listened to my personal instincts a little bit more mm. after my first child, because I feel like when things felt off or different or wrong or had a question a lot of times I'd maybe turn to like Google which is the worst place on earth to look like just do not Google things it's really not good like it really isn't and I feel like there were so many things that I just instinctually knew and I wish I had trusted it a little bit more because with my second child it's funny because everything has been totally different they're completely different babies I had to relearn everything all over again but I feel like I was better at trusting my instincts and just knowing that like I am the best person for my child and do what I think is best for them So those are just a couple things. I know that didn't really give you info other than just saying like, trust yourself. No, I think that's actually really important to say to trust your own instincts, because like you even just said, your first baby coming from your body is different, completely different than the next baby. Totally different. That just goes to show how different every human is going to have. So you can't like turn to Instagram and be like, I mean, you can, of course, be like, give me some inspiration and and like, hey, you know, turn to them for help in certain things, but also to not compare to other, what other people are doing for their kid or, you know, because if one woman can have two very different babies, think about how different all of our children all will be and how we should never compare what's best for one to the other. A hundred percent. And that's so true. It's like, there's no one guidebook to being a parent because every experience is different and every day is different. So just That's kind of the biggest thing. And I also, okay, one more thing, actually, because I feel like in the first, with your first child, first pregnancy, when everything's your first, it's hard to know that everything will turn out okay and that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And I feel like with my second, it's been so much easier to like push through the sleepless nights because I know like you will sleep again. I promise you, you will sleep through the night again in your life. You will. I promise you that you will get past the teething, that you will get past the difficulty if you are breastfeeding or if you're not breastfeeding, you're bottle feeding, like all of those things will be okay. So just try to like enjoy and live in them. Like I feel like the second time around, I was so much more like excited to wake up with my baby in the middle of the night because I knew that it wouldn't last forever. And I crave that sometimes with Sage. I'm like, I wish I could go back to one of those sleepless nights with her one more time. So I feel like just like know that you will get through those rough patches. So enjoy them as much as you can. I like that. I think that's great advice. Morgan wants to know what is next for you and your family. And if you would ever go back on Dancing with the Stars. Oh, I feel like this is such a frequently asked question. And I mean, understandably, understandably, because I've never really said like, I'm done forever. And that's still my answer. Like I, I'm not done forever, but I also don't have like a set of like, okay, in one year I will start doing dance with the stars again. It's really just then that every single time the kind of time roll around to think about it, I just look at where my family's at, where my girls are at, where I feel like their needs are. Cause that's the thing is every year it's so different. Like last year, Sage's needs were so different than they are now, emotionally, physically, all the things. So I just kind of am going to have to take it a year at a time. So that's not really an answer, but it's never, it's, I'm never saying never. I'm not going to Justin Bieber that never say never. So there's that. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. I had to do that. I feel like it's um, (laughs) one of those things that, yeah, it's, it it would kind of be based on where you're at in your life timing. Yeah. Next year could look completely different from the year after that or what it looked like in the past. So you got to go with your own timeline and Matt, I don't know if it's Madeline or Madeline, but she says, I love her so much. What is the thing she misses the most about dancing with the stars? Oh, I think the thing I missed the most, which I really was able to get back this past season with Riley was just my friends and like the family aspect of the show. And I loved it because I, yes, it's unlike anything else. Like we are seriously family and it's so special. And like just the fun energy of the shows, like I definitely miss those things, but it was great because I got to go back to watch the shows and I got to see my friends and catch up and feel that energy. And that's something that I will always miss, but I'm lucky that like I, it's so cool to me that I have lifelong friends out of this job that I had for such a long time. And I'm really grateful for that. I mean, think about that. There is a handful of people in the whole world that get to be pros on Dancing with the Stars. I know. Literally a handful out of the whole world. So it's so cool that that was your job for over a decade. I know. Like that's- I know. So and cool. it's crazy to think that like, they're my friends. Like yeah. you don't always get along with your coworkers. Like that's not always the case. And it's not like we picked each other. Like we were all just brought into this thing together. We're competing against each other actively yet. We all still are friends, which I love so much. I think that's what shocked me the most about going on the show. How like, even if there are people who like, you know, like butt heads sometimes or yeah. d- 
don't get along. It still has such a family dynamic and atmosphere because you immediately talk through it with that person or you just freaking hash it out and then you move on and you're back to being a family. Like I was like, I was shocked by how much we all even seen myself in that competitive environment, wanting to root for other people during it yeah. too, because you're like, you kind what of am I doing? Know what you're going through. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Oh, I know how hard that person worked for that. Like, I'm so proud of them. And I feel like you guys all do that as pros as well. It's really cool. I feel like it's the respect is really there. So even like you said, when there's moments where it's like you butt heads, you don't get along, like the respect of like, this job is hard. Let's just support each other through it has always been there. And it's so special. I look back on that time, like the tour and on the show is like probably a highlight of my whole life. Like, I feel like it I was- love that such a unique experience. And again, like feel like I made lifelong friends out of it. I did feel like a family and it was just like, oh, and I love dancing. So like being on stage yeah. and doing all that, I was like, oh, my soul is just on fire. I loved it. It's so good. Okay. This question's from Caitlin Bristow. Do you think they'll ever do an all-star season again? I would love to see that. We need so many, like, I feel like there's so many for me specifically, I'm like, I can think of like three partners that I'm like, I need to do it again with them. I need to. So yes. if I feel like if they did an all-star season and I got to pick which one of my partners I got to be with, I would do the show in a heartbeat. I would make it happen. Oh, totally. <laughs> but they need to do that. They need to do Because they did it one season and I personally loved it. Because I feel like you got like the cream of the crop. Like you got like the best of the best all together. And it was just... It was good. So they need to, I don't know anything about it. But I, I would do it should. for free. I would yes, literally like, do it I for free. Just, and you would be so fun to watch. Like, I feel like a winner season would be good, uh, cool too. Like went past winners. Cause they've done That's all sorts where it's thinking. like, but then I'm like, I wonder if that would be a little bit too, because it'd be all the really good dancers. So then I'm like, maybe that's not very entertaining. Mm. You've got to have some of the, you've got to have the ups and downs, you know, like the really good and the really bad. But oh, that's I would true. Watch. I didn't think about that. I thought All Star season just meant the winners. So now I'm like, no, oh, if they did All Star, the board. It was just like ah. anybody who'd been on the show. It wasn't just winners. So I was during 2020. So I was like, I didn't get the full experience. Nobody got to yes. come watch me in the audience. My dang family it. couldn't watch. Oh, they couldn't come it. see me. I'm I like, forget. I need a redo. I need a redo. Too. I forget. Yeah, you do. Because that is that makes it different for sure. Oh, I forgot about that. Okay. Last question is from Cecilia. She said, I would like to know how they choose who gets partnered with who on Dancing with the Stars. So if you, I mean, you know, Dina, Dina is our casting yes. director. Obsessed She's the best. Dina. She's the one who finds the celebrities. I think she along with everybody like the other producers on the show really work to like find celebrities for specific pros contrary to what I feel like people think we really have absolutely no say in it like we just we don't know what's gonna happen and I feel like it's a it's a combination of things like it's obviously like personality type age height plays into it a lot especially as the yeah. girl pros like it's funny, I'm not the tallest pro, but I look the tallest because I've just got really long like limbs and everything. So I always get paired with a tall guy. Like I've all, ah, if there's a tall pro or a tall celebrity, I'm most likely going to be paired with them. Same with like PETA. PETA is actually a lot. She's like a couple inches taller than me, but they pay attention to that. They pay attention to age, personality type. Like I feel like I got a lot of the like sweet like family men like the dads yeah. and because I just feel like yeah. that kind of went along with like me so I don't know I feel like there's a lot that goes into it I don't always fully understand there's times where I'm like I don't really see yeah. that but then it's funny because as the season goes through you're like oh that actually really makes sense so they do a really good job of like pairing quite the formula yes the formula I think about that with like you, casting for any show has a crazy formula for like oh yeah you know like what what they see in somebody and why and they've been doing yeah. it for so many years that they know, you know, they know their formula now. But like Daniela and Iman Shumpert, I'm like, yes. what? And then they win, I know. And that totally and it was sense. amazing. Yeah. I know. But it's so, I feel like too, probably sometimes they cast people together and then it's, they are surprised. Like, I'm sure that happens all the time where they're like, we did not see it being this. Like, you just like, don't know. So it's pretty cool how, it's pretty cool how it always works out. And I've always been very grateful because I'm like, thank you for this partner. Because I've really loved every single one of them. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast and let everyone know where they can find you and, and join your fitness journey and all of the yes. things. Okay. So you can follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Lynn Arnold. You can follow my workout program at the movement club, and then you can join the program by going movement, going to movementclub.com. We have a seven day free trial. So try it out and I promise you'll love it. Yeah.
That's amazing. <laughs> well, congrats on everything. I feel like no matter Thank what you, you do, it it's it's gonna be good. And I I love what Thank you're doing. You. I love watching. I love following you. You're so sweet, and your whole family is just adorable. Oh, you're the sweetest. Thank you. I'm so glad we got to chat. I missed you. And it, it's funny because, like you said, we didn't get to do the same season, but I feel like we did. Like I'm like we did somewhere I know I feel very connected to you so it works <laughs> I feel the same way I even said that to my assistant this morning for a second she was like oh yeah and you guys were on the same season together I was like yeah we, wait, I was like no. wait no we, we weren't because I feel the same way it's, I feel like once you're in the dance with the stars family it's just like just, some connection yeah it is it is it's, how it's it goes. Family. Forced, forced family I love yeah. it well thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day tell your family I say thank hi you. they don't know who I am thank but I love them I will I will <laughs> okay okay bye Lindsay I'm Caitlin Bristow. I'll see you next Tuesday. See you next Tuesday.